What is going on, folks? This is Jacob filling in for Tom O'Brien. Thank you for staying with us. We were just streaming the Q&A with Powell. Uh, looking at the market, there is some very interesting moves today with everything. I'm looking at the ES Mini right now. Uh, just when he started speaking, we had a nice, just real skyrocket up from the uh, below the Ford, uh, 4390 area, reaching up almost to 4430. Let's take a look. We were, we were red for most of the day up until then. Um, taking a look, your big techs are down a little bit, so we're really just trading sideways in a major way. Uh, spy at 437. The dollar really took a dive today. So before the meeting, we had a nice pop up, and now we're getting down into the 102 levels. Uh, interesting to look at. Let's take a look at the gold contract. Obviously, the GDX up just minorly with that dollar depression. Uh, some big volume to the down here. Uh, below almost to, yeah, 1952 and up to 1965. So some pretty big volatility uh, regarding that today. Let's take a look. Uh, the mini... Uh, down 4.7. So a lot of trading sideways. Obviously, NQ's up 0.7, so almost a percent here. Um, taking a look at some other things. Carnival up. So yeah, decided to pause the uh, rate hike today. And <laughs> it, it is so, like, the crowd is fickle, right? So, uh, you know, everyone was hoping for this. As it comes out, it just seems like he's just getting faded online. All the questions are, you know, at least the first three um, but that was kind of, it was a motif through a lot of the other uh, questions from, from the journalists, was why? Well, you know, if, if you're expecting, Powell is essentially saying they still expect rate hikes throughout the rest of the year, okay? Uh, but he's going to pause right now, and this was for uh, his, what did he say? Essentially, he was saying we're going to wait for the economy to kind of uh, basically acclimate to what they are currently. I don't know how I feel about that answer particularly. Um, however, you know, we are getting a little bit of upside right now. He did admit as well that they still see uh, some risk to the upside regarding inflation, that core CPI um, isn't responding um, too significantly. They said they're still uncertain about the uh, impacts that credit tightening will have. So, you know, there's just a lot of uncertainty right now. Um, they did pause, uh, but they're still expecting uh, some increases throughout the rest of the year. So, interesting Q&A nonetheless. I'm glad you guys could join us with that. Um, so, I, I want to take a look as well because, you know, they're speaking that the, the labor market has been pretty resistant to this, right? However, what I find interesting is kind of this disparity here between, you know, the increase in the labor market and, you um, the real weekly earnings. And this is kind of what we've had through 2022, 2023. So we still have a depression essentially of, of wages, right? Increase in jobs. Um, and it, it's just a really, uh, it's, it's a little bit voodoo, I guess, right? It's a little bit bizarre kind of seeing how this economy in its whole, you know, considering the labor market, considering job, excuse me, um, wages and then considering the um the, the stock market itself right there's a lot of really strange things kind of going on they were looking out to uh forecasts essentially uh, they they took a i guess a poll of among people um within the fed of where they expect the rates to be you know going out i think to 2025 and you had a few people looking at rates sticking around like a three three and a half percent uh so you know, interesting. I was saying in the den, I'm not really, you know, it'll be interesting to see a time where rates are anywhere above 2%. So much of my time growing up and kind of coming of age was during quantitative easing. Um, so they're also reducing their securities. Um, so a lot of interesting uh, Q&A today. And that's what's so interesting, right? Like this, this pause in particular, and again, we want to call it like a pause because they will most likely resume. Um, the, the, the pause brought up even, you know, better questions, essentially. Where is disinflation actually going to occur, right? He was saying that a lot of people at the Fed see, um, you, you know, inflation going down to about 3.9% uh, on the year. And that would be a, quite a significant decrease for sure. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. Again, looking at core inflation, it's still going to take a little time, at least for shelter, to come down a little bit. That's a huge weight in uh, the core CPI. Um, 
so that, that lags a little bit behind with the increase in uh, Fed rates. So, quite interesting. Moving forward a little bit, uh, talking more with uh, the Treasury Department and the IRS, um, they're paving the way for cities and nonprofits to get uh, climate bill tax credits. This tax credit system, you know, there's the low income housing tax credit uh, that was started by Reagan in the 80s. And this was an idea to essentially get, you know, large businesses uh, to, to invest in uh, indirectly, in some sense, in government programs, right? They're run by syndicates, but uh, it, it worked um, for quite a while and it still works a little bit. Uh, the Treasury Department and Internal Revenue Services on Wednesday released guidance that will enable state, city, local governments, and other nonprofit entities uh, to get cash payments in the value of the Climate Bill Clean Energy Tax Credits. Uh, this could help schools electrify their bus fleets, nonprofit groups put solar panels on the roofs of their building, uh, and help rural energy collectives invest in renewables. And this new guidance stands to grease, you know, this is, quote, grease the flywheel of uh, climate tech investment in the United States already being spurred by the Inflation Reduction Act. So doing a little bit of government spending on that. So uh, in the 10 months since the IRA passed, the private sector companies have announced more than $107 billion in new clean energy investments. Uh, that was by John Podesta. Uh, he's the senior advisor to the president for clean energy. I didn't know that, actually, that Podesta was in that position. Uh, and he said that on a call uh, on Tuesday. Conventionally, states, territories, tribes, local governments, and nonprofits have not been eligible for tax credits. You know, and it'll be interesting to see if, we, you know, this is like our, I think we, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see how government spending really kind of affects what's going on currently, right? Um, the Inflation Reduction Act's biggest tools are tax credits. Uh, for the first time, tax-exempt entities uh, will be able to receive a payment equal to the full value of tax credit for building qualifying clean energy. Yeah, and Jimmy D in the den as well, he just, he's still listening, uh, just said at least a couple years out for any rate cuts. No pivot for you, he says at the end there. Yeah, it, it's, it'll be quite, you know, this is, this is really like a new uh, paradigm, essentially, right? So long we had these low rates and that just spurred so much spending, right? We look at it too. Okay, let me pull this back up quickly. Sorry, folks. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. I'm going to get my charts back up. <laughs> we have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. 
These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, welcome back, folks. Uh, another interesting thing to look at is the uh, producer inflation here. And, uh, you know, obviously that's the amount of money put into uh, producing the products and then therefore that, you know, reflects in the final price. Um, so this is after yesterday's CPI report. We'll get the Fed's decision from its uh, FOMC. Obviously, we were just listening to that. Uh, PPI is often referred to as wholesale prices. We just went over that as well. The PPI on a year-over-year -year basis fell to 1.1%, well below the 2% target, and uh, still hurtling lower from last month's 2.3%. The chart is breathtaking, as they say here. Uh, the core PPI, which excludes energy and food, too fell below estimates, coming in at 2.8% year-over-year, uh, down from 3.2%. And that just really, that figure there, the disparity between these two, and this is only 0.4%, but, you know, we saw it as well in the um, CPI. It's just energy is, is weighing that down so heavily. Um, so it's always something to keep in mind. It, But again, the Fed, you know, generally looks at uh, core CPI. So uh, the month over month change came in negative for PPI at uh, point, negative 0.3% versus uh, a growth of 0.2% last month. Uh, indicating not just slowing rice rises, uh, price rises, but in fact price drops. And that's deflation, not just disinflation, of course. And this is PPI at a lag of two months here. Very interesting to see here, huh? Obviously, they did not raise the hike. And it's interesting, too. I was looking at these, like, bi this is kind of like a side point, but I was looking at these binary, uh, they call them binary option contracts, but you're kind of just betting on yes or no, and uh, it's a really good way, in my opinion, to kind of get sentiment, <laughs> at least in like some small part of the market. How many people are actually doing binary contracts? Not that many, but um, it's, it's still interesting to see what people are thinking and putting money into. And this was kind of, I think it was actually like, a, it was 97 cents to three cents. So earlier, just before the meeting, you had a, you know, most people, 97% of people thought that they're not gonna raise uh, rates whatsoever, so. We'll take a little bit of a look here. Um, NVIDIA was essentially impervious today from any kind of downtrend, and it just shows how strong this Titan is. I mean, we cracked, you know, way over the 400 level uh, from this morning on um, at least volume on the daily. Let's take a look here. Let's take a look on the three months. I mean, yeah, some good volume still as well, right, regarding today. Uh, NVIDIA is going to maintain this power. I was looking more at AMD. They did release news about their chips yesterday. Uh, for whatever reason, though, it sold off a bit. Um, let me take a look. Oh, I thought I had it saved. Let's take a look real quick. And this is the Ryzen chip. People love it. I, I think a lot of people... What, NVIDIA is having the benefit of being, like, the name flagship of the chip sector right now, where I think, you know... AMD is going to continue to be pretty strong, right? And it, it has increased substantially uh, since the beginning of this year. I think NVIDIA is something like 187%. Uh, AMD, not as much, but still pretty substantially. 
Um, but N NVIDIA is just this flagship company for it, right? Like it's, it is the name brand company of this whole sector. Um, I, I don't think that means in any capacity uh, that AMD is uh, inferior to NVIDIA. Um, th like I said, they're still getting the, the meta purchase. Uh, they're going to be in a bunch of uh, new kind of tech as well. So I still like it. It still looks good. You obviously had some big volume yesterday on it, uh, a lot of volatility. Um, and today, you know, we'll see where we end out. That's still up, though. And today we were down. So positive little switch on that. Two... And again, I want to I want to go off track a little bit here with these processors. I was reading uh, this article last night. It was nuts. What they're doing now is they're taking cells. Okay, like we're all on this digital thing, right? But if you're a sci-fi fan, you know the the pinnacle of all computing and all machinery is the uh, biological, right? And scientists have figured out how to take human cells, okay, and they inject some kind of virus into them, and this turns them into uh, stem cells. And essentially every organ in your body, right, kind of starts off, I mean your body in general starts off as stem cells and there are different like growth factors uh, that get targeted at these stem cells and it um, allows them to specialize into different organs, right? And so scientists are doing this in labs, they're calling them organoids and they've created this like, this lattice structure and they've, they've put the growth factor for brain cells into these stem cells and uh, they're, they're teaching it, it, it can't be called machine learning, right? Because it's, it's organic. But the way that they're teaching this thing how to, they're playing Pong right now, okay? And if it does something wrong, it sends it like an electrical impulse. If it does something right, it sends some kind of like neurotransmitter to it uh, that is, you know, positive, like as a reward system. I mean, it's really insane. And so we're creeping into, you know, something like, you know, super AI or just, you know, general intelligence in general. Um, but I think the real move forward that is now, you know, it's it's quiet and there's not a lot of things, you know, not, not a lot of exposure, I guess, in the media for it. And we're still probably a few decades out, but we get to a point where computing is, is done on the organic, right? And this seems like relatively like cost effective as well. Uh, I was looking at some of the, you can buy like stem cells online, it's bizarre. Uh, and they were not like super expensive or anything like that. Um, so we might see a day in the next few decades where it's like, hey, digital AI was cool, uh, but now we have brain organoids uh, that do all the computing for us. And you want to talk about ethics regarding, you know, some kind of general intelligence. That's <laughs> some, something like using a uh, grown brain is uh, really where we uh, get into that kind of thing here. We'll look at Google a little bit. Uh, they got smacked on all ends today. The European Commission and the, uh, the U.S. government as well is trying to essentially not necessarily sue them, but break up uh, their ad tech business, right? Didn't seem like it really, you know, didn't affect it too much at all over the three month. We're still up 92 from 92, uh, cracking nearly 130, but back down to 120 right now. Uh, but this is for the, from the European Commission. It said it's taken a preliminary view that Google has breached antitrust rules in the advertising technology industry and that only a divestment of part of its services would address concerns. The regular said Google favors its own online display advertising technology services to the detriment of other providers as well as advertisers and online publishers. Uh, the commission's preliminary view is therefore that the only mandatory, um, that only the mandatory divestment by Google of part of its service would address uh, the competition concerns. And so the U.S. actually went ahead and, and sued Google over the dominance as well. Um, this is the, from the DOJ, it's suing Google for allegedly exercising monopolistic control of the digital advertising market. And the latest legal broadside against the group as Washington seeks to crack down on the dominance of big tech. Uh, a complaint filed Tuesday, basically saying they're anti-competitive. They quote it as an industry behemoth. And it said it harmed competition uh, in the ad tech sector by engaging in a systematic campaign to seize control of the wide swath of high tech tools used by publishers. Advertisers, brokers to facilitate digital advertising. It seems like every other month, some commission tries to hit these guys and um, it just becomes so protracted that it kind of just falls into obscurity. Um, but, you know. We'll see if there's any like legitimate impact or rather action taken from this. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.
The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at United Healthcare Group. They plunged they're almost down 7% today. Um, so this came essentially after um, CFO John Rex told an audience at Goldman Sachs Global Healthcare Conference that a recent surge in surgeries and other medical care might push expenses higher than previously forecasted. Basically, um, a lot of the elderly were pushing off surgeries during COVID, and now they are ready to have those surgeries. The time of this writing was down 9.3%. Uh, let's see here. The surge in elective procedures like joint replacements come after many of these surgeries were postponed by hospitals during the COVID pandemic. Uh, this is the U largest U.S. health insurer and uh, concerns about higher costs unleashed a wave of selling across the S&P 500 managed care index. And really, I I'm sure we've all been affected by this, but insurance has gone off, gone up dramatically, um, whether that's auto health, you know, whatever. It's just been insane. Um, obviously, some places are a little bit you know, more intense than others. In St. Pete, I had something like a 20% increase in, in my uh, health care and auto insurance. It, it was nuts. Uh, United Healthcare has forecasted a medical loss ratio, a measure of medical expenses, uh, to be between 82.1% and 83.1% for 2023, pretty intense. Uh, the ratio premium revenue is spent on medical care. So, something to just keep in mind, this is a pretty substantial drop. Uh, this is the, the low of the year right now. Um, so, and on substantial volume as well. Still a behemoth, obviously, so largest uh, in the country. Talking about some other interesting news, we'll take a look at Toyota. They have some interesting 
Why can I not find? I thought it was T. Give me one second. Oh, it's TM, of course. My God, I wasn't quizzed on that, right? So yeah, let's take a look. What we can just do? Well, fine. We can move the yearly. Um, Pretty nice bump today. Uh, essentially, they're uh, claiming that a solid-state EV battery tech breakthrough occurred, and uh, this could offer 900 miles of driving range, um, substantial volume today. People loved this, if true, big if true. Um, at a recently held technical briefing, Toyota revealed plans for several new technologies, uh, including next-gen EV batteries, aerodynamic drag reduction, and manufacturing upgrades to help transform the company in the electric era. After discovering a breakthrough, Toyota says it aims to offer solid-state EV batteries that could potentially offer over 900 miles driving range. And this came out uh, a day after uh, a Chinese company was saying they've got one, and that's Cattle, I think, C-A-T-L. Uh, they were running 400 kilometers, and so that's pretty, on a 10-minute charge, is pretty impressive. So these batteries are getting quite a bit better. Uh, let me pull back here. Um, Toyota did reveal several new innovations to support its next generation EVs, including the following, which are manufacturing upgrades to reduce costs, hypersonic tech uh, to enhance aerodynamics, EV battery tech, and so on. And also, I want to say, too, like, and this is so minimal compared to big tech breakthroughs, but they're getting a lot better at, like, designing their cars. The, the newer Prius this year, and I might have touched on this when it came out, uh, but it looks, it looks pretty sweet, if you ask me. I'm not going to drive it, but... I mean, let's take a look at this, right? Oh, wow. I mean, that's better than uh, whatever they were releasing a few years back that always got dragged. But this does not look bad. I, there's definitely some like, positive evolution there as well. I'll pull over this article here. Uh, to ensure its EVs are profitable, profitable, Toyota says it will incorporate a simple and slim vehicle body structure through the giga casting interesting thing to look into. Uh, the process used by Tesla simplifies manufacturing by reducing the number of pieces needing to make a car. Very cool. <laughs> you just build your own, right? What's interesting too, again on a side note, is this, um, you know, this is meant to basically distort the dimensions of the vehicle. So, you know, when they're, when they're test driving them out. And I was curious of, I mean, obviously it makes sense, right? I was just looking at the history of it a few years back when I, when I first saw one in Tampa. And this technique was actually developed by uh, militaries in World War I, and they would do it to their ships as well. And uh, it was the first foray, essentially, into camouflage. Let me see if I can pull up a picture for you, just for some quick um, edification for you, because I thought it's neat, and we still use uh, this technology today, at least now in Enterprise, right? But yeah, take a quick look at this. This is what they were doing to the ships back in World War II. And this was, again, meant to distort uh, size uh, and kind of distance and all of that. Very interesting, nonetheless. But I would love to see what Toyota's coming out with. I really liked their plan going forward uh, when the CEO released um, kind of his speech a few months ago. Um, and it seems like they're, it seems like they're serious about getting into this. And, uh, you know, we can respect that for sure. So... Talking about a little bit about prices, maybe shelter going down a little bit. You know, in Tampa, where we're at now, they came out with a study. You know, we're across the bay in St. Petersburg here. Um, but, you know, we're, we're experiencing a similar thing. Uh, a study came out, um, you, you know, regionally done, uh, that you need about $80,000 a year to, to live in Tampa, right? Now, of course, Tampa's very large. You can live on the peripheries, and that's fine. But if you're going to be in the center, um, which is quite a substantial increase from years prior. Uh, this is from the Wall Street Journal. Says, Renters are about to get the upper hand. Uh, new lease rents are poised to fall on an annual basis uh, for only the second time since the 2008 financial crisis. And I'll say, too, you know, there is like areas in, in St. Pete, OK, that, uh, you know, a few years ago, if you had gone to them and I'm talking about apartment complexes, I mean, they were not safe. They were something like twelve hundred dollars. I mean, you didn't you just didn't want to be in that area. And with everything increasing and more people moving here and all the money coming from health care in the area, you're having uh, these uh, essentially like, you know, pretty poor conditions in some of these apartments. And they're charging stuff like two thousand dollars a month for them without changing. Right. Such a big 
such a big increase. It's a lot of profit, obviously, obviously for the owners of the property, um, and there hasn't really, you know, the quality hasn't changed much whatsoever. Hopefully, uh, we get to see a little break in that. Apartment rent growth is declining fast, uh, shifting the rental market to the tenant's favor for the first time in years. The average of six national rental price measures from rental listing and property data companies shows new lease asking rents rose just under 2% over, over the 12 months ending in May. And that is down from the double digit increases uh, of a year ago and represents the largest deceleration over any year in recent history, according to the CoStar Group, which is a rental uh, software company, excuse me, RealPage is the rental software company. An annual decline would offer relief for millions of renters. And I think also today they are having a, uh, like a renter strike happening in uh, Toronto. So you know, this is becoming a, a big issue, at least in North America, and it's been a problem for a long time in Europe in general, right? It's just smaller and more people. Um, but to kind of visualize this a little bit, um, you know, that's a decent drop, right? All the way up from 18%, according to apartment list. So I would love to see that kind of apply a little bit. I've definitely seen some freezing in uh, rent increases, at least where I'm at, um, but it'd be nice to see it come down a little bit as well. Um, so, yeah, pretty, pretty fascinating stuff going on. I think in general, too, uh, you know, with the rates going up, uh, I think mortgages are going to go up as well. And, and the, the purchase of homes, uh, I think, will slow down significantly. And, and I fear a little bit, too, and I'll have to look more into this for tomorrow. Um, but, you know, with these kind of balloon rates, essentially, regarding mortgages, I wonder if, you know, what percentage of the population can actually afford to pay these increasing rates when they were buying um, at, at, you know, again, pretty low rates. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Just some quick kind of look over, uh, this is over chocolate, right? And a lot of our uh, kind of food commodities are getting a little bit uh, hammered. Uh, regarding prices are going to go up a little bit. So the chocolate is set to get more expensive as cacao prices soar to seven-year highs. Chocolate prices have risen by 14% uh, in the past year, according to consumer intelligence. Uh, sugar, another principal ingredient of chocolate, is also seeing price spikes, uh, breaching an 11-year high in April. Among the different varieties of chocolate, prices of dark will reportedly be hit hardest. Obviously, they have the largest uh, percentage of cacao in them. Uh, the cacao market has experienced a remarkable surge in prices. This season marks the second consecutive deficit, with cacao ending stocks expected to dwindle to unusually low levels. Prices of cacao on Friday surged to 3,160 per metric ton, uh, the highest since May 5th, 2016. The commodity was last trading at 31.71. The El Nino weather phenomenon is forecast to bring lower than average rainfall um, to West Africa. Ghana is a huge producer of, of chocolate beans. And I think in recent years, they've also been trying to um, manufacture it there as well. The, the president of Ghana, when he took over a while ago, he, he kind of had this no tomfoolery um, with other countries. But I think it's become a little bit difficult for him, uh, you know, basically going horizontal on the supply chain. And what I, what I mean by that is, uh, you know, you got to ship the chocolate bars. Ghana is extremely hot um, and uh, they don't hold up very well. So it's quite expensive. But it seems like we were talking yesterday, you know, wheat's getting hit, uh, corn's getting hit. So we're just going to kind of uh, continue to see these kind of things go up. We'll talk a little bit, some interesting stories of check fraud, and I'll talk a little bit about um, the, the uh, fraud that was going on during uh, COVID-19. There was a lot of relief aid stolen and wasted. So this is uh, from Fortune. This is check fraud has gotten so rampant that the postal officials are warning Americans to avoid mailing checks. <laughs> Excuse me. Check fraud is back in a big way, fueled by a rise in organized crime that is forcing small businesses and individuals to take additional safety measures or to avoid sending checks through the mail. Now, I actually know a little bit about this uh, from, from the cultural perspective. Not, of course, I don't know anyone who's doing uh, checking fraud or anything. Um, but there's a very popular like subset of, of music and kind of, I would suppose you'd say like internet culture uh, and they call it they call it scammer wave, okay? And it is just these guys either making songs about how they're scamming people and explaining how they're doing it, um, or they're making videos uh, on TikTok and YouTube and Twitter of how to uh, effectively scam people, whether it's checking fraud, whether it's identity theft, whether it's you know just plugging in something you buy online uh, to mess with an ATM machine. Uh, this is like a really, I mean, it's a small portion, right, But of, of the society, but it's very loud. Um, and the, uh, the people online who are in that corner, you know, there's a substantial number of them. Uh, banks issued roughly 680,000 reports of check fraud to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network uh, last year. That's up from 350,000, that's insane, uh, reports in 2021. Meanwhile, the U.S. Postal Inspection Service reported roughly 300,000 complaints of mail theft in 2021, more than double the prior year's total. Early in the pandemic, government relief checks became an attractive target for criminals. Uh, the problem has only gotten worse, and postal authorities and bank officials are warning Americans to avoid mailing checks if possible, or at least use a secure mail drop, uh, such as inside the post service, excuse me, post office. Meanwhile, as the cases of fraud increase, victims are waiting longer to recover their stolen money. That's wild to me. And, you know, the, the sad thing is, too, like, yeah, I mean, they banks will, like, back this. But really, these people are, like, victimizing other people who are in their same position, you know? They're just taking advantage of uh, your, your, like, their fellow, their neighbor. It's just, like, the worst kind of thing uh, that can happen, you know? It's very sad. On that topic, though, with all of the, uh, the relief, relief checks being targeted by criminals, I thought this was another super interesting uh paper, or at least an article, excuse me, from the AP, and this is, they're titling this The Great Grift and How Billions in COVID-19 Relief Aid Was Stolen or Wasted. Uh, fraudsters used social security numbers of dead people 
and federal prisoners to get unemployment checks. Uh, they collected those benefits in multiple states, and federal loan applicants weren't cross-checked against a Treasury Department database that would have raised red flags about sketchy borrowers. It still blows my mind that, that I, like the using the Social Security numbers of deceased people, I mean, that was a, a big news story like years ago, and I'm, su I'm surprised that still goes on. And I guess you don't have to check with the federal government that someone has passed. I'm not really sure how that kind of works, um, but it's insane that they're able to do that. And the, uh, the, the people in prison, that's just a shame, right? Uh, criminals and gangs grabbed the money, uh, but so did US, a U.S. soldier in Georgia, the pastors of a defunct church in Texas, and former state lawmakers. I mean, obviously, these are all criminals, right? Um, an Associated Press analysis found that fraudsters potentially stole more than $280 billion in COVID-19 relief funding. Another $123 billion was wasted or misspent. Uh, combined, the loss represents 10% of the $4.2 trillion that the U.S. government has so far dispersed uh, in COVID-19 relief aid. Uh, that number is going to grow as investigations dig deeper. It's just nuts to me. This, this whole thing is insane. I mean, $280 billion is, is really intense. I mean, really, I don't know. Let's see, an $837 billion IRS program, for example, succeeded 99% of the time in getting economic stimulus checks to the proper taxpayers. Uh, nevertheless, that 1% failure rate translated to nearly $8 billion going into ineligible uh, individuals. And, you know, I mean, this is really just a, a massive waste. I mean, $280 billion can obviously go quite a long way, um, however the government decides to spend it, um, but it's, you know, better than, uh, than, than giving it to fraudsters. We were talking a little bit about growing cells earlier. We have here Upside Food secures the USDA approval uh, for its cultivated meat. So they're growing meat on like silicon lattices and you can eat it. It's, you know, they told me it's good. California's Upside Foods said on Wednesday it received regulatory approval from the USDA for the label on its cell cultivated chicken, making it the second company in the United States to secure their approval. Uh, several companies are seeking approval from U.S. regulators for cultivated meat and fish products, hoping to appeal to customers concerned about the environmental impact of raising livestock for food. I don't know. I mean, it's it certainly, listen, right? Like, so there are, is evidence, I suppose, you know, um, I mean, obviously we're cutting into fishing supplies. Uh, the way they raise chickens is kind of weird. Um, you know, I say that euphemistically. Um, and uh, there's people say that, uh, you know, farming cows contributes quite a bit uh, to CO2, or excuse me, um, to methane production. I still think that the way you're going to have to win over these people and the, and the difficulty of doing so to get them to eat lab grown meat, the thing is, is it doesn't look like normal meat, right? Uh, I mean, obviously, it's, it's, it's grown on a st certain structure, right? And it kind of holds that structure. And I think you're going to have an uphill battle a little bit. I mean, maybe like in a generation or two, that will be a little bit better. Um, or if they force it to be the only other um, kind of alternative, right? But we're getting in a period now where, you know, animal, you know, farming essentially, right, is taking a turn to where, you know, you're, you're, they're healthier, but there's not as many, okay? And I think people are adjusting themselves to maybe eating less meat that is raised more ethically and therefore is perceived as healthier, which I'm sure it's definitely healthier. Um, and they would rather do that, reduce the consumption, than eat lab-grown meat. But we'll, you know, I may be, uh, I may be a little bit biased on this. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're seeing a little bit of a pullback right now. Um, still up a little bit in the NDX and the Qs. We were down just a second ago, but um, seems like we're moving a little bit up on that. Uh, the Russell's obviously down uh, still at 1.45%, and Q's up same, 0.21, and the, uh, the YM down almost a full uh, percent here. So we'll see where we close. We close below the 14.9 level in the NDX, um, so stay tuned for that. The dollar doesn't really know what it wants to do, it seems, so stay, uh, you know, again, Powell is still saying that inflation is an issue, and he is still saying that there are going to be continued rate increases, right? I think the only thing that's stopping him from going harder about it is he doesn't know how the, the credit tightenings are going to affect the market, right? But that comes from the banks. So, you know, we'll see. Um, for our little science tour for the day, this is interesting. So they cut off rhino horns, okay, in order to stop poachers from, uh, from killing them uh, to sell on the black market. Uh, it turns out that this actually might harm them in other ways. Cutting off rhino horns to prevent poaching uh, makes them home bodies. Very strange. You never know what's going to happen with Mother Nature. You try to do something, uh, you try to make something a little bit better or prevent it, and she comes back with something strange like this. Uh, it says here, uh, when rhino poaching reached a crisis in 2014, they essentially started sawing off the, uh, the horns uh, making the animals roam far less widely and presumably interact less with other rhinos. We might get some sad rhinos from this. The discovery reported today in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences raises important questions, says Michael Knight, uh, chair of the International Union for Conservation of uh, Nature's African Rhino Specialist Group. Wow, that is uh, quite the, the name. Um, so the black rhino, which lives only in Africa, is critically endangered. Only 6,200 remain. It's also happening to, so let's see here. This is what they're doing. It's used in Chinese traditional medicine. Say, um, it can fetch up to $65,000 per kilogram. Wow. You know, it's also that uh, elephants are being born more and more with uh, smaller tusks. That's quite a weird, kind of weird world, huh? Folks, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Thursday. Tom will be back Tuesday. We um, are closed Monday along with the NYSE. Thank you so much, folks. Building wealth, trading in the